Hi everyone, today is Friday, May the 4th. Um, happy Star Wars Day. <laughs> Welcome to episode 70 of Knits and Stuff. My name is Alicia and today we'll be talking about works in progress, pretty things, and local delights. Um, first, welcome to those of you that are new, and for those of you that are returning, welcome back. Um, if you haven't already, uh, there's a group on Ravelry that you can join. It's called Knits and Stuff Podcast, and there'll be a link in the show notes, which are at knitsandstuffpodcast.com. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, show notes are down below. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's get started. Um, no finished objects this time, but I do have some works in progress. And the first is something you guys have seen before if you've watched previous episodes. Um, they are the Toe Up Socks with a Difference by Wendy D. Johnson. So I can get my needles untangled. Um, and I did not knit that much on this sock, but um, I was where this little ice cream narwhal <laughs> um, was last time, and so I'm making progress on the second sock. Um, this is going to be an afterthought heel sock um, out of Mustache Yarn Perfect Sock in the Dark Side of the Moon colorway, and these are on US 1's 2.25 millimeter high high needles. And, um, yeah, the, I already have the first sock, um, done except for the heel. So I'm getting close. Uh, not really. Okay. <laughs> I'm like two thirds of the way where I need to be, um, before I can cast off or do at least do the ribbing or something. Um, so yeah, these, I haven't really been working on these too much because um, I haven't really been doing that much knitting outside the house um, and these are my purse knitting uh, socks I guess or my travel knitting socks um, and they're sitting in the uh, silver shed sheet bag that I have um, yeah so those are the socks but so what I have been knitting on a lot recently um, is a new project that has made quite a bit of progress <laughs> um, and it is something I talked about I think last time um, briefly because I finally picked up the yarn from Miss Babs that I needed to start this and it is the color no, not color. The <laughs> Woolen Waves Shawl by Casapinka. Um, and the yarn is Miss Babs. Um, it was a gradient set. And the colorway set was Fun in the Sun. Um, and it's got orange, pink, and then a gradient of blues or teals almost. So like a light blue all the way down to a dark teal and um, and then I picked up the Quicksilver which is the gray um, it stitches west so I showed that last time and um, yeah there the yarn is the um, her yummy two ply toes and it's a fingering white yarn so yeah I've made <laughs> quite a bit of progress on this shawl as you see um, I think I'm in the third pattern section now um, where I'm doing some stripes and um, yeah it's been a fun pattern to knit as you can see there's gonna be a lot of ends to weave in um, and yeah it's um, hopefully it won't be too bad <laughs> but um, there are definitely parts of the pattern where you can carry the colors up the side so that's good. <laughs> that cuts down on the number of ends to weave in. Um, but yeah, it's been really fun to knit. Yeah, and I think it'll be a nice spring slash summer shawl uh, because it's a little bit lighter and because the colors are so like California beachy. <laughs> so um, yeah, so that is um, that work in progress. And that's sitting in the new um, chicken boots bag that I got. Um, from Stitches West, which matches very well in its color scheme um, with the llamas and the cactus. So that's pretty fun. 
and although I think the bag might be slightly small for the project but I haven't really been putting the shawl in the bag just the yarn um, so that's good <laughs> um, yeah so that's all the works in progress that I've been doing the past month or so um, and yeah that brings us to pretty things so I actually forgot to show a couple things last time um, from my Stitches West haul and one of them I did show but I didn't mention <laughs> because they were on um, or they were holding socks but these are some sock blockers that I got um, from A Needle Runs Through It and they're actually double sided so you can put um, medium size and large size socks on here um, one on either or not at the same time but one side is medium and one side is large um, and I just thought they were really pretty the pattern and um, with the hummingbird and just like the laser cut is really nice um, and then um, yeah just ha being able to have those two sizes yeah so right now my sock blockers are just a medium um, so it'll be good to have the large size although I did notice or realize I guess after I started using them um, if you do have medium socks that have a leg that go up really high and you don't um, want them to be stretched more or if they just happen to be smaller than this uh, large side then um, it wouldn't really work <laughs> out um, to put the medium on the bottom and then your leg ends up being um, stretched out more but I feel like most of the time your socks um, would probably be would probably f still fit okay even if you have them um, the top part stretched out a little bit because I don't know that it's actually that much wider but yeah I don't know but I was using um, the large side I think I forget I don't know but it worked out okay when I was putting the TARDIS socks on there although I'm not sure how waterproof the material is so you probably wouldn't want your socks to be too wet when you put them on here um, so that's another thing but otherwise yeah they're really fun so that is the sock blockers that I got um, and then I also got um, this came in the knit more girls goodie bag um, that they gave out at their meet and greet and they had kind of the, I don't know if I talked about it last time, but they had some of the um, standard things that they usually give out, like a tape measure and a darning needle. Um, but they also had something really cool, which was the Acre Works um, swatch gauge, yeah, <laughs> uh, measurement tool. And um, yeah, so I'll take that out. And you just put it on your swatch and you can measure um, how many stitches per inch you get or per centimeter um yeah they have both so yeah that was pretty cool um and yeah so that's the two things that i forgot about forgot to talk about at stitches west last um last episode and then one more pretty thing that i have is um a new magazine so I just got um, the issue, latest issue of making, um, issue five, which is color, <laughs> and um, there were a bunch of cute projects in here. So a lot of the projects in here are really um, fun and bright, and they play with color um, a little bit. And yes, yeah, so some of the ones that I liked were um, this well-dressed donkey. Um, which is in a little embroidered embroidered donkey um, with cute little flowers on it and then I also really liked this backpack which is really cute um, I like the colors and the style that they have um, I just got a bag actually that has the handles at the top so you can kind of use it um, as a tote when you're when you carry it by the handles but then you can also use it as a backpack so I thought that was really neat um, and to be able to make that just so that would be really fun um, and also this was in the kids section but these little mittens are really cute um, 
the embroidered pattern on the mittens, although it's probably getting too warm for mittens. Um, even though it's been cold lately, that's why I'm wearing like long sleeves and a cowl. Uh, but yeah, more appropriate for the weather though. These um, Hudson mitts, they've got uh, their little lace wrist warmers. Um, and yeah, I thought those were really cute too. And last on here, or the last project that I picked out was this mint leaves sweater. Um, I thought this was really pretty. And this is by Hohi Locatelli. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of fun um, patterns in here. And um, yeah, maybe I'll try and knit something soon out of here. I don't know, I feel like I have a lot of magazines and books that I haven't really knit out of just because the Ravelry pattern library is so large too that there's just so many different projects. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I'm ever gonna be able to knit the like 800 things in my queue, but they're there, so <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the making magazine. Um, and that is it for pretty things, which brings us to local delights. And this local delights is also kind of like a finished objects section in a way, but it's not knitting related. So, um, for local delights, I wanted to talk about Laney College, which is a community college in Oakland, and they offer a bunch of different classes, including ceramics, which I had never taken in school when I was younger. Um, like in high school, I never took ceramics. I always took art, <laughs> um, but, um, but I always wanted to try it. And so some of my friends were doing, um, were taking the class. And so I signed up for it for this past semester, spring semester. And it was, it is, it's almost over. <laughs> um, it's been a lot of fun and I've made a lot of different, things that are okay <laughs> for a beginner, I guess. Um, so yeah, I wanted to show some of the fun stuff that I've made so far. So we have um, these little cups that I made. Also, um, one thing that I've been doing, or I was doing when I first started glazing my pieces, um, was that I was using the same glaze techniques pattern, I guess, um, the whole time. So, um, I, everything in here is like, uh, what was called matte turquoise, um, on the inside and then what's called satin white on the outside. <laughs> so that was a little pot. Um, and then this one's kind of fun too. It's like, I, I don't have no idea what I'm going to use these for. Um, because not all of them are like are in the shape of food containers like stuff, so I don't know um, yet. But I've made like little cylinders um, and little containers that hold things. Again, the matte turquoise and the satin white on the outside, um, and then eventually I started branching out um, of cylinders, I guess, and started making bowls. But that's still matte turquoise and um, satin white on the outside and then finally I was like okay I'm getting tired because I have a ton of pieces over here that are that color so I decided to try some new um, new things also um, oh I guess this one is still um, the same clay so there were two types of clay that I've tried so far and then the ones that I've been showing are um, a certain type of clay that is darker and has more grit to it um, and it's called rod spot and um, so yeah this is satin just all satin white so this is no more turquoise on the inside <laughs> and um, and then I also tried uh, the other clay that they have um, which is called white stoneware and it ends up being um, whiter um, once it's fired and the glazes show different. So this is matte turquoise on the um, white stoneware. And I thought that was interesting. It's definitely more matte too than it was on the rock spot. But um, yeah, and then 
Some other colors, still kind of in the same family, um, is this teal. Um, it's called Racer Celadon. I don't know if these names are like standard at all, um, standard glaze names, or if they just happen to be the ones that they use at Laney, but um, they are, yeah, they're, they're there. So yeah, and this is um, another little bowl out of Racer Celadon, and then finally some different colors, although finally some different colors. Um, these these two are in Douglas Celadon, which is kind of like this forest green, or I guess it kind of, it looked forest green on the samples, and then when mine came out, they're kind of like an olivey green. Um, yeah, and they're slightly different colors, which is interesting because they're both, I did these both at the same time. Everything always comes out um, as a surprise. <laughs> and then this one is um, called Tomoku, and it's this dark um, glaze that actually comes out kind of like coppery metallic, or at least this one did. Um, it's definitely got this metallic sheen to it. So I thought that was pretty interesting. But yeah, so that <laughs> I've, um, that's been a lot of fun taking that class. Highly recommend um, if you are interested. Um, definitely, I don't know, take a look at your local community colleges and see if they have any classes that interest you because they're also very affordable um, compared to like some of the other studios or, well, specifically ceramics compared to some of the ceramic studios um, in the area. The college is definitely a good way to go. So, yeah, that's my local delights. Um, and that's all I have for you guys today. Um, thank you for watching. Um, social media stuff. I am Eliana Knits on Ravelry, Unperfect529 on Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, etc. Um, and again, show notes are knitsandstuffpodcast.com or down below if you're watching on YouTube. And yeah, um, I'll just tend to post monthly. So hopefully I will see you guys again in about a month. And um, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.